Okay, this is the story of McGilligot's Pool by Dr. Seuss. This is one of my favorite Dr. Seuss books. This book is at least 50 years old and it's gone through eight kids in our family. It was copyrighted in 1947, so that means it's 73 years old. It's still as good today as it was then. Young man, laughed the farmer, you're sort of a fool. You'll never catch fish in McGilligot's pool. The pool is too small, and you might as well know it. When people have junk, here's the place that they throw it. You might catch a boot, you might catch a can, you might catch a bottle, but listen, young man, if you sat 50 years with your worms and your wishes, you'd grow a long beard before you'd catch fishes. Hmm, answered Marco, you may be, you're right. I've been here three hours without a single bite. There might be no fish, but again, well, there might, because you never can tell what goes on down below. This pool might be bigger than you or I know. This might be a pool like I've read in in books, connected to one of those underground brooks an underground river that starts here and flows right under the pasture. And then, well, who knows? It might go along down where no one can see, right under State Highway 203, right under the wagons, right under the toes of Mrs. Umbroso, who's out hanging clothes. It might keep on flowing, perhaps who can tell, right under the people in Sneedon's hotel right under the grass while they're playing croquet, then under the mountains and far, far away. This might be a river, now mightn't it be, connecting McGilligot's pool with the sea. Then maybe some fish might be swimming toward me. If such a thing could be, they certainly would be. Some very smart fellow might point out the way to the place where I'm fishing. And that's why I say, if I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGilligot's pool. I might catch a thin fish. I might catch a stout fish. I might catch a short or a long, long drawn out fish. Any kind, any shape, any color or size. I might catch some fish that would open your eyes. I won't be surprised if a dogfish appears, complete with a collar and long floppy ears, woofing along, and perhaps he might chase a whole lot of catfish straight to this place. I might catch a fish with a pinwheel-like tail. I might catch a fish who has fins like a sail. I might catch some young fish some high jumping friskers. I might catch an old one with long flowing whiskers. I might catch a fish with a long curly nose. I might catch a fish like a rooster that crows. I might catch a fish with a checkerboard belly or even a fish made of strawberry jelly. I might catch a seahorse. Now mightn't I now? I might catch a fish who is partly a cow. Some fish from the tropics, all sunburned and hot, might decide to swim up. Well, they might, might they not? Racing up north for a chance to get cool. Full steam ahead for McGilligot's pool. Some Eskimo fish from beyond Hudson Bay might decide to swim down. Might be headed this way. It's a pretty long trip, but they might, and they may. I might catch an eel. Well, I might, it depends. A long, twisting eel with a lot of strange bends. And oddly enough, with a head on both ends. One doesn't catch this kind of fish as a rule. But the chances are fine in a McGilligot's pool. I might catch a fish with a terrible grouch. Or an Australian fish with a kangaroo's pouch. 
Who wants to catch small ones like mackerel or trout? Say, I'll catch a sawfish with such a long snout that he needs an assistant to help him about. If I wait long enough, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McGilligot's pool? Some roughneck old lobster all gristle and muscle might grab at my bait, then would I have a tussle? To land one so tough might take two or three hours, but the next might be easy. The kind that likes flowers. I might catch some sort of a fast moving bloke who zips through the wave with a one arm stroke. I might, and I may, and that's really no joke. A fish even faster. A fish, if you please, who slides down the sides of strange islands on skis. He might ski on over and pay me a visit. That's not impossible. Really now, is it? Some circus fish, fish from an acrobat school, might stage a big show in McGilligot's pool. Or I might catch a fish from a stranger place yet. From the world's highest river in far-off Tibet, where the falls are so steep that it's dangerous to ride them. So the fish put up shoots, and they float down beside them. From the world's deepest ocean, from way down below, from down in the mud where the deep divers go, from down in the mire and the muck and the mark, I might catch some fish who are all going glurk. Whales. I'll catch whales. Yes, a whole herd of whales. I'll spout in their spouts and thrush in their tails. I'll catch 50 whales. Then I'll step for the day because there's nothing that's bigger than whales, so they say. Still, of course, it might be that there is something bigger. That's sort of a kind of a thingamajigger. A fish that's so big, if you know what I mean, that he makes a whale look like a tiny sardine. Oh, the sea is so full of a number of fish. If a fellow is patient, he might get his wish. And that's why I think that I'm not such a fool when I sit here and fish in McGilligot's pool. The end. All right. Good story, huh? Now we're going to make a fish, an origami fish. And pretty much the only thing you need are scissors, a piece of paper, a crayon if you want. You can use any color paper you want. And that's it. Um, First, we're going to start off by turning this rectangle into a square. And anybody can do it. You just fold this down, make a corner, the corner match up here, like that. Match up your edges so you have a nice straight line. And then you go like that. Press it down. And now we're going to cut off this tail. Ready? It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, throw that away. Now, that's it all. We have a nice square. So the first thing we're gonna do is fold it down toward you in half. Match up your corners. Match up your corners. And then press it like that. And then we're gonna fold it in half to the right. Just like that. Match up your corners. And press down your fold, just like that. Now you should have a smaller square. All right, now we're going to go ahead and open it up. So your mount, it's kind of like a mountain like that. Push it down like that. We're gonna go this corner to the center line. So you just fold it, you make a little triangle. And press it down. Same thing on this side, this corner to the center line. Have a, a triangle like that. All right, now this is kind of the tricky part. You're gonna pull this up just a little bit, 
and you're going to stick your finger in this hole like that. And we're going to take this fold and press it down to this fold like that. Kind of looks like a paper airplane. Same thing on this side. Press this fold down to this fold. Phone's ringing. Just like that. Alrighty. Now that we have it like that, turn the page. And you can find this origami in this really cool origami book it's called Origami Pets. It's in the library. I have a whole bunch of different ones. All right, so next we are going to let me think here. I believe we do this. Maybe not. Wait. I need to think a minute. I think we do this. Just a second here. Let me think. Is that right? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Start over. Okay. So we were at that point like that. We I forgot to turn it over. Turn it over like that. And then we're gonna see where that fold is. You're gonna just fold it over like that. Same thing on the other side. Fold it over like that. Okay, so it looks like that. And now we're gonna take about a third of it and flip it up. Right. Do the same thing on the other side. You turn it over, take about a third of it, and flip it up. Now it kind of looks like that boat we made last week, but it's not. Now we're going to take this corner, and we're going to take this corner right here and have it point toward you. So we're going to fold it down like that. So this corner is pointing toward you, and this line is straight up and down. Okay, same thing on this side. Point the corner down toward you, and you want this straight up and down. And then we flip it, and we're going to do the same thing. This corner, just like that, toward you. So I don't get it quite straight there, but it's okay. Take that corner and down toward you. All right. Now, go ahead, put your thumbs in here, and you push it together like that, and voila, you have a fish. I think it's a fish from a Gallagher's pool. <laughs> and now you can take a crayon, go ahead and decorate it if you want, you can put some lines on your fins. You can color it. You can use colored paper. That's pretty cool too, but you can even make it sit up right if you. That one's it. I've got a couple others here. A whole herd of fish. A school. I guess it's a school of fish, isn't that so? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have fun.